Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Wow, it's been a long time since I actually said that. Um, wow, a lot happened. One second. Okay, a lot happened, and um, <laughs> it was a good episode. Um, coming back now. A couple of things before we get started. Um, three things actually. One, Kelly Monaco is not going to be in it for a little bit. Um, is not going to be in the show for a little bit. She was reported to have some sort of breathing problems. She's not like COVID, you know, like positive or anything like that. But I don't know. She's been having some pre some breathing problems or whatever. But they said that she's going to be fine and she's going to be returning back shortly. Well. Not shortly, but she's going to be returning back at some point. So, that means while she's gone, they're going to have another, um, like, actress replace her. So, yeah. Um, two. Um, I don't remember, I don't know the name of the actress that plays, um, Lulu. Let's just sit there and say that there was a tragedy in her family, and... Now, I don't know if she's... I'm um, going to be taking some time, I don't know if she's going to be taking some time off, or what the case is, um, but I just, I feel like I should give people, you know, a head up, heads up or whatever, just in case if she may not be there for the first couple episodes or whatever, um, because she's dealing with a family tragedy right now, so I don't know if she's going to be there or not, but just in case. Also, three. I'm probably not going to be doing a review tomorrow because I have a big test tomorrow. And um, depending on how that goes, I may have a physical on Wednesday. So, I don't know exactly how long the stuff is going to take. But, um, going into Thursday, Friday, and then probably the rest of the week, everything's going to go back to the regular schedule. Um, also... And I probably didn't sit there and say my other reviews or my other videos. Sometimes Mondays and Tuesdays is a longer day for me. So I may pull out these reviews a little bit later. I apologize for that. But work's been kind of crazy. So sometimes, depending on Monday or Tuesday, I may kind of get a little bit later. Like, kind of like today. So apologies for the late um, review. Uh, yeah. So that's it. So let's get started. Uh, let's start with... Olivia and Ned, and for a good minute, I was seriously about to call him Justin. Um, long story short, Olivia and Ned get into an argument. Well, that's not really true. Olivia starts an argument with Ned, um, because she misses her son. And this whole thing is revolving around her son, and she picks a fight with him because he's very concerned about ELQ, who's trying to take over the family business and things of that nature and she's just like I don't know um the thing is I'm trying to understand where she's coming from but at first she starts talking about Dante like she's the only person that's talking about him um and she makes this blank statement that like you know she feels alone but then she backtracks and it, it just it snowballs into something much worse because then she's practically telling him that he needs to pull away from the family business and, and give some sort of BS excuse. And he's just like, yo, listen, Michael is pretty much sleeping at the wheel. And more or less, he's kind of responsible for this whole hostile takeover. And now I'm pretty much trying to cl clean up his mess. And he can't, you know, like, do this and be, like, there at the same time. Like, he's trying to fight for custody of his son. So... I feel like he's the only person that's actually being rational in this whole argument. And, um, yeah, they just continue to argue up until the point where Brooklyn comes in. And that's pretty much where their scene ends. And, uh, let's talk about Dante. Um, because I think I, I said, no, that, no, I think. I said this a couple months back that the actor is going to be returning. To GH and um, yeah, he's returned. Now I was gonna sit there and get in some reasons, theories or whatever, but eh, I I just I don't feel like 
no. Because I feel like I, I may actually be kind of petty and I'm just not going to go there. So, um, anyway, he's back. And he, uh, his character's going through PTSD. Um, that's pretty much the majority of his whole scenes. Um, at one point he tries to, I guess, go through these exercises that, I guess, that the clinic has been t um, teaching him how to do as far as, like, writing down his feelings and stuff like that. I think it was, the only part I thought was actually really interesting, besides the fact that he's came back, and I actually did like the character. Um, my whole thing, the reason why I start, I felt like I started to not like him so much is that he just became, he kind of became like, a second fiddle to like Lulu and her nonsense. You know, Lulu do, Lulu would do something stupid and Dante would sit there and try to be the rational one and then Lulu would constantly sit there and flip out on him like how she handled the whole Charlotte thing and you know just lashing out on him for not quote unquote having her back where he's the only one that's they're trying to see anyway. Um so yeah, yeah, what the hell is that to say? So yeah, he's back. He's he's been writing notes. He's been writing actual letters to her, but he's just not been sending them because he feels like he's still a danger. And um, so he takes the notes that he's been writing and just been putting it by his bed. Um, and that that pretty much kind of ends this scene. I'm gonna get to. Well, there's actually two parts that's actually really good. Well, three parts. I forgot I'm actually dealing with an hour episode. Um, and I feel like more stuff happened in the show. Let's, uh... Jeez, where did I start? Let's talk about Brooklyn and Valentine. Because, well, Brooklyn ain't no fool. Um, the minute they sit down and they start talking, Brooklyn is automatically on defensive, and Valentine picks up on that. He's like, listen, I'm not your enemy. I want to sit there and help you out. Brooklyn figures out that she, he's the one that's buying up all the shares. And so, you know, she she's like, yo, listen, I'm just going to sit there and tell my dad. And then, well, let's just sit there and say Valentine um, gives her an offer that she can't really refuse. Um, pretty much about a music career. That he's going to help her out in the music world or whatever. Kind of get her back out there because her career has stalled. And, um... Basically, it was like there's no mu there's no producer that's gonna sit there and like, you know, deal with her between the scandals and probably like, I don't know, just do kind of like probably blackballing her in a lot of ways. Excuse me. It ain't happening right now. So Valentine's like, listen, if you keep your mouth shut, I'll help you out. And um, Brooklyn doesn't say no. She doesn't say yes, but she doesn't say no. She just kind of just walks off. And, um, you know, Valentine just kind of walks away feeling confident. He even tells Martin Gray, like, listen, um, she figured it out. And Martin is pretty much just like, well, what are you going to do? Like, here's, here's how I look at it. I feel like, because Martin is like, well, the minute that Edward finds out it's you, your plan is going to be dead in the water. But I don't feel like it's going to be that simple. Um, I honestly don't feel like he really needs Brooklyn, um, to keep her silence. I, I don't. I feel like it's just a benefit for her. Like, he's gonna get, I feel like he's gonna possibly get control of ELQ either way. Um, you know, her silence or not, he already has her share. So, like, he really doesn't need her. Um, so this is all in Brooklyn's, um, benefit. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the the conclusion that I feel like I'm drawing from this whole thing. Let's talk about the custody, the court case. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I I, I know it sounds kind of bad, but I, I kind of miss days for just like kind of skipping past all this court drama a little bit. But this was kind of interesting. Um, long story short, um, Nell pretty much shot herself in the foot. Um, well, she shot herself in the foot two times. Um, when Nina got on the stand, Nina started talking and, you know, at first things seemed like it was going her way, you know. She talked about how she was a good employee and she picked up stuff really fast and then uh, man, that shit just went left. <laughs> the minute Martin Gray asked like, so what do you think about her character? 
She's a compulsive liar. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of didn't see that coming. Um, but, yeah, she was like, He's, she's a compulsive liar. And she just, like, went in on her at that point. And so now flipped out and started just causing the scene. Um, yelled at Nina and just started yelling and going crazy. Um, and then towards the end, it was pretty, you know, that, that was number two. And then the third part that I felt like really kind of sunk her whole thing was when Tate got on the stand and she testified and it was very heartfelt. It was very sincere. It talked about Michael being a good person. Just pretty much Michael was perfect at this point. Um, like 99% perfect. That's literally how she described, um, how Tate described, um, Michael. So, after the court hearing was done, Diane was pretty much like, well, I don't want to jinx stuff, but, uh, this kind of seems like we have this. Um, so, I I'm going to find it very interesting to see if, um, Nell wins this, because when Nell left the courtroom, even Julian was like, yo, listen, you have a great lawyer. You screwed this up. And, of course, she's getting mad at everyone, and this is the thing that I... I feel like I need to kind of stress about now is that I feel like she is a one-dimensional character. She started off with a bunch of different layers, you know, and then when she started trying to redeem herself with Michael and stuff and trying to be apologetic and, and trying to be a better person, I was like, you know what, I feel like I can actually like this character. But for whatever odd reason, they decided, nope, we're going to make you the bad guy or the bad girl, so yeah. And then it just became this one note, I'm mad at people, I want to get revenge, this, that, and the third, I'm not going to let her win. And it just, that's pretty much what she just became into, just one note, one dimensional character. And hell, she, once she finished with Julian, because she had nobody else to sit there and argue with, she goes up into, um, she goes into Nina's office and is like, you betrayed me. And of course, Nina feels bad because, well, one... What she said was just, like, unforgivable. She said something along the lines of, well, I have my baby and you're jealous. And I was like, wow, whatever sort of sympathy that you was getting from anyone, and she said this in court, that shit just went straight out the damn window. So, good job. Just, wow. Um, but anyway, she gets up there and she's like, you betrayed me. And, you know, it pretty much kind of ended on that. Um... Of course, Nina, again, Nina was feeling kind of guilty because she felt like she got played. You know, she wanted to sit there and believe the best in her. And, um, she felt, she looked at Nell and saw herself in a lot of ways and wanted to give her that chance of redeeming herself like people have gave her. And, um, she talked to Jackson. I don't know. I don't, to tell you, I don't even know if she even felt better. Jax tried to do her best, tried to do his best to make her feel better, but I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I felt like it was like 70% at best that she felt a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that, that, that happened there. And my final scene is with Cyrus, Portia, and Lauren. Laura. <laughs> um, Cyrus comes to the hospital and right away he pretty much asks Portia, hey, how's your daughter doing? Yo, bro, you don't, you don't talk about somebody else's children, B. I get even if he meant it in a positive way, you don't talk about somebody else's children. So, of course, he creeped her out. Laura saw that and was like, yo, hold on. She literally walked and, like, put her hand across Portia like she was shielding her. Um, so, anyway, after that whole exchange goes, um... <clears throat> <clears throat> Cyrus is seen talking to, because he's like, yo, listen, I got some business. And he talks to some guy. And then, um, Cyrus walks away. He walks, he walks away when he walks into a corner. Because he looks at Laura, because Laura's like, yo, what the hell is going on? And I guess this is a board member from the hospital. And Laura's like, yo, what are you doing sitting there talking to him for? Like, what are you doing? And the guy makes up some sort of excuse. Oh, I felt like he was wrongfully accused. And just kind of just scurries off, like as fast as hell and um 
Cyrus comes back out of the corner, like he sniffed the same pickaboo or some shit, and um, they talk for a little bit. And at this point, Laura, I felt like that's when she started to lose confidence and just handling this whole situation. Um, they start talking and pretty much Cyrus is like, listen, I'm going to be the new benefactor. I'm going to have a whole wing just dedicated to me. It's going to be the call the Cyrus something. I can't remember what he said. But, you know, as Laura Smith is talking, you can hear it in the voice that, like, that confidence that she had is just slowly slipping away, sli um, slipping away. Um, she gets so upset that she's like, oh, well, she, she says something about, like, oh, um, you're a drug dealer or, um, I'm not gonna let you fund your drug money in here or some shit like that. And that's when Cyrus is like, that's when Cyrus just put her in her place. And was like, do not sit there and make assumptions about me. Don't underestimate me. And then he walked away, and Laura was practically going to be in tears by the time he um, got in the elevator. Um, and, 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 and yeah, I'm like, listen, you can sit there, and I get that you have a position to try to be poor Charles Saver, you're the mayor and everything like that. Even though their election was rigged, but um, you know this guy is way above your pay grade, and you may not be able to handle this guy by yourself. And trying to act tough and calling him out and thinking that he's not going to do anything is just straight up stupid. So yeah. Um. Anyway, he got a shook, and then he walked off, and she was scared. And, um... Yeah. I think that's actually about it. I, I You know, let me pause it for a second. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. I mean, um... I'm not gonna lie. When now when um, Nina called um, Nell a compulsive liar, Carly was just, like... It was just like the best time of her life at that point. She was just relishing in that whole thing. And I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of found it funny because I did not think that she was just going to... She literally just came... It just went left. One minute she's sitting there talking about, yeah, she's a good worker. Next minute, she's a compulsive liar. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> at one point, even Nell was just like, what? Where? where did that come from? Um... But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this review. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And like I said before, um, I may not be doing a review tomorrow because I have a test. And depending on how the test goes, I, you know, I may have to do a physical the next day. I'm not sure. So I don't want to sit there and say I'm going to do something and then it doesn't come out. But going from, well, after Wednesday, Thursday on, I'll be back to normal. And um, yeah. So anyway, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Be safe, and I will catch you in the next review.